Welcome to the Sankofa Ancestor Shrine, where every week we invite spiritual black folk to reconnect with our ancestors as we journey through the crossroads. Please consider donating through patreon.com slash Sankofa Shrine. Ancestors, thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for sticking by us even when we're uncertain, even when it's very hard for us to stay true to ourselves and to the path that we've chosen, that we feel called to by you and by nature, by ourselves and our own intuitive feelings. Help us to overcome our fears of owning who we are Help us to remain safe as we navigate people who don't understand our path. Help us to take our fears and give them to you. Help us to bury these fears, place a stone over them so they cannot come up anymore and allow us to become like a tree deeply rooted in our own intuition and in our own faith and understanding. Ancestors, thank you for being in our lives. Thank you for the blessings that we've had in the last week, in the last few weeks, this whole new year. Please stay by our side as we continue to navigate our own understandings spiritually, financially, in our family, and beyond. Ashe.
so much time searching for me in silence and despair instead of watching I did not pay attention to what it was that I should see Your throne through deliberate purification. Find your way back to your star. Hello, welcome. Uh, Today I thought we would get into a book I got a little while back to read with you all and look through and share some things. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from it. Uh, It does have a lot of pictures of art, um, interpretations, um, modern and, you know, older that are from people within the diaspora um, you know, reacting and, uh, showing how they've, you know, made do with what they have or, you know, carried on the tradition. Um, and so there's one part in particular, um, that I'm going to do my best to read for you. Um, I, I'm sure I'll mispronounce something, but, uh, we're still going to do our best and learn and grow together. Um, This is called Hoodoo is What We Do um, by a writer and musician named uh, Greg Tate. You can check him out. I think he still makes music. He's in a few bands. Um, I'm not sure when this one was written, but I did think it was very interesting that um, the picture was a bottle tree here on the right. Um, and it was just, it's just a branch and the bottles put on it, um, artificially made by, it says by an artist named Gary Simmons. Um, so yes, we are going to see about getting through this one. I'm, I'm not sure how much I'll speak on it because it's more poetry. So up to not poetry, but like prose, I guess. So it's, it's up to your interpretation as well as um, just his viewpoint in a lot of this. But I thought it was such a powerful um, way of describing um, hoodoo and the practice and, um, you know, the feeling behind it, the energy behind it. Hoodoo is what we do. That old black magic made anew. By who? By you, fool. The master of that just grew, that 
American Negro, the New World African, that nigga. Master of the Jess Grew and the Tis What It Is and Making Something Out of Nothing, who will power whole civilizations with that monkey rhythm and this bridge called My Back. The same ones known to declare, I ain't no African. The same one also known to speak in tongues, keep bottle trees in his front yard, scatter cracked poetry on the gravestones out back, dance the juba, broom sweep spirits off the dirt floors and toss salt over his shoulders, pour thunderbird libations for the brothers who can't be here, consult dream books for divination and not only see dead people, but openly conversate with them on the regular. So what kind of African are you is the real mystery of history. Are you free or are you a mystery? The DNA might say Zimbabwe, but when you asked Richard Pryor about your roots, he told you, nigga, your roots are in Cleveland. And that was true, too, because you were blessed or cursed with this whole double consciousness thing. You're your own twin, your own masks of Janice, your own Bilbo Jangles Robinson and Al Jolson, too. You've learned to see yourself from the inside out and from the outside in and from the outside out, too. It's why your champions are often given to talking about themselves in the third person like they're having an out of body experience. Today, Serena was an angry Serena, and she used that anger to win, says Serena. Bono's hoodoo. Call it the black man's theory of evolution. Call it funk as so defined by the funk doctor George Clinton himself. As in, funk means if you're in Chinatown, you learn to like Chinese food real fast. That's funky. About as funk as your ass not so fresh off the boat from Africa after 90 days heaving and hur hurling across the Atlantic in the form of chain, lashed, shit and piss splashed cargo, a voyage best described by our man Arthur Jaffa as an Auschwitz on the water. Funkier still when you're then taken to Wall Street to the sounds of a marching band to be redistributed and renditioned to the land of cotton for the rest of your days. No time off for good behavior, where you'll learn to like table scraps real fast. Does it get any funkier than that? The hoodoo comes in when you figure out that while your fate is to be treated like a farm animal or a garden tool, you're this strange sort of farm animal garden tool who has a need to pray and to love and to plant and to run away and to rebel and to read and one day even to rule like rock and roll by de default in this uncultured nation you were supposed to only slave, stay black and blue and die in. Hoodoo is what you call hope, what you call medicine. What you call the nine billion names of God, a mojo hand, a grigri bag, Hi John the Conqueror root, a Congo square, a Madame Marie Laveau, the witch queen of New Orleans, a Nat Turner, and a Toussaint L'Ouverture too. Because who needs sor sorcery or secret societies more than a rebellious garden tool? Who will have to also make myth, music, magic, muscle memory, race memory, and yeah, the English language do strange things, forbidden and unbidden things, unofficial and twisted creole things, things even, to steal a drink from freedom's cup. This is what we mean by hoodoo. Jimi Hendrix told you he was a voodoo child, told you he stood right next to a mountain, chopped it down with the edge of his hand, picked up all the pieces, made himself an island, and how now he might even raise a little sand. Told you he made love to you in your sleep, and yet you felt no pain because he was a million miles away, and at the same time right there in your picture frame. Miles Davis told you he was running the voodoo down, but drummer Don Elias told you the song didn't come together until he put a rhythm on it. He'd picked up in the streets of New Orleans a week earlier. This is what we mean by hoodoo. George Clinton essaying how the rhythm of vision is a dancer. 
George Clinton telling you he was one of five born to a mother, an older sister and three younger brothers who all had seen it hard and seen it kind of rough, but how always with a smile, their mother would try to hide from them the fact that life was really tough and how this night he heard his mother call to the Lord how it was for the kids and everything and please don't judge me too strong and how he heard the devil sing, would you like to dance with me? We're going to, we're doing the cosmic slop. And though the neighbors would stop and call her Jezebel, always she tried to hide the fact from them that she was catching hell. Way before two live crew, mama was in Chinatown loving that Chinese food real good and loving it a long time. Check the books, The Souls of Black Folk, the autobiography of an ex-colored man, Cain. I wonder, I wonder. Their eyes were watching God, native son, black boy, invisible man, freelance pallbearers, all night visitors, mumbo jumbo, Nova, Dahlgren, beloved, the literature of a people obsessed with affirming the no somethingness of their nothingness, the dada of their nada, the beep of their bop, the hep of their hop, and the reification of their thingification a people whose most eloquent defense of their humanity would be, I have a dream, later distilled to, I am somebody, distilled later still to, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. Black Lives Matter. 40 million somebodies still need to prove they're not nobodies to anybody who will listen and buy the t-shirt. Still need to prove they're not ghosts in the flesh, hence the reason why they gave their invisibility and insurgencies a fanciful name and thus became freedom riders and members of SNCC and CORE or joined the lost and found nation of Islam, the 5% nation, or recruited for the Black ba Panther Party and the Simbas and us or got jumped into the Bloods and the Crips and Blackstone Rangers and the Black Liberation Army and the Black Guerrilla Family and the All African People's Revolutionary Party and the Republic of New Africa and they would all tell you they were all out for the block or the people or to free the land except this was America and not Pal Palestine so the most you could ever hope to liberate was your dream name from your slave name or your slave name from a slave's visceral terror of becoming visible. Benjamin Banneker style, Chris Crispus Attic, Attic style, David Walker style, Nat Turner style, Harriet Tubman style, Frederick Douglass style, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, P Booker T. Washington style, Ida B. Wells, Anna Julius Cooper, Sojourner Truth style, Marcus Garvey, A. Philip Randolph, Paul Robeson, Duke Ellington style. This is what we mean by hoodoo too, doing the thing on your name and taking it to the stage in the name of all the invisibles and nobodies from whom you came. Like the man born little who became the man named X, who became the man named Shabazz, like the man named Blunt, who became the man named Ra, like the man named Ram who told us Ram LZ was not a name but an equi equation while ramming the elevated trains of the New York City subway system to their highest symbolic mathematical military formation, the Z, which variously means in various etymologies, the weapon, the thing, the devil, the sleeper, the zero, a mobile style obsessed army of spray can thieves moving in stealth deep underground, transforming train cars into two, four, six, eight, and ten piece illuminated manuscripts, crypts, chapels, temples, and cathedrals, an army of nobodies armed with Krylons, spray cans making war on invisibility with alphabetic geometries and wild style typographies, bringing light to Stygian darkness like Bernini ripped on hashish, speed, ripple, Mogan David, Boone's Farm, rum, coke, weed, speed, crystal meth, crack, like Carvaggio on Freebase and Von Bode, like Goya high off an angel dust, LSD and Annie Warhol, because self-determination rhymes with self-medication, like acid rhymes with Woodstock generation. Free your invisible mind and your nameless ass will follow, but follow it where? Not back to Africa nor back to slavery neither. Purgatory perhaps, though that may be too biblical an interpretation for some, 
though if nobody's have to be going somewhere, maybe the Rastafarian have the best answer yet in Zion. A promised land with a, without a fixed location, more a state of mind than a destination, as elusive and constantly receding as an event horizon, as distant as the nearest star, an abstraction with the radical politics, mad flow and bounce, a rhythm with vision, a break dancer, broken free of gravity, spinning across the heaven and star systems. Who knew? Who do? The sh shadow do and just grew. Bo knew too that it ain't who you do, but who you who do. So one generation will call it conjuration and another generation will call it cultural nationalism and another will call it the hip hop nation. A nation of tricksters and word magicians pretending to be gangsters and warriors, ballers and bankers, soldiers and simpletons, cannon fodder and hyper capitalist tools. Only just like in Mizoguchi's, Quaden, and Dunbar's, we wear the mask. If you wear the mask that grins and lies long enough, that mask will stick to you like a silk shirt on a 90 degree day. And people will see only the invisibility, the rhythm of vision, which you want them to see and pay handsomely for the privilege. The question then becomes who or what now actually lives on the other side of that magical stuck on mask? who breathes and who dreams for the hoodoo that's now been put on you. The soul man you sold to Viacom, the bluesicians you sold to Sources, the jazz cred you sold to Coca-Cola and Ken Burns, the rap star you tricked out for a ride. Are you tax free or are you still a mystery, a living captive joke or a runaway riddle? Busta Rhymes or Jean Michael, Elephant Man or Robert Nesta Marley? This century, the rhythm of vision will have to be an actual visualizer. If only because they're the only Negroes we got left who can't sell nigga cliches to survive. The 20th century was the age of, the, of black music, but methinks that day is about done. All that sonic hoodoo capital we spent, or at least generally redistributed. The wealth of hoodoo nations been translated into Norwegian jazz, German dub, Mumbai house, British soul, French hip hop, Japanese reggae, Brazilian funk, European improv, so that the 21st century could well become the age of the black image, the age of the shadow do, the age of hoodoo hieroglyphics, the age of David Hammonds, who like Roy de Car Carava had, has long seen in the dark, in the black and infinitude of hues, forms, and formulations, as many or more as Inuit peoples are said to see in the driven Arctic snow. I think maybe my people are about to get already about getting all, Manichaean out this fr uh, further mucker, about to bring forth more darkness from the light. Talking about Lorna Simpson out this piece, talking about Carrie Mae Weems, Carrie James Marshall, Gary Simmons, Ellen Gallagher, and Carol Walker too. Talking about all conceptual Negroes and New World African conceptualists I've been known to associate with, the likes of Lyle Ashton Harris, Chris O'Philly, Satched Hoyt, Sanford Biggers, Wengechi Mutu, Adia Millet, and Deborah Grant, Kehende Wiley, Xaviera Simmons, Mark Andre Robinson too, not to mention all the conceptual Negroes and New World African conceptualists that I ain't never met, or just barely but mostly admire from far, afar, the Layla Alice, Demetrius Olivers, Koja Griffins, Mark Bradford, Edgar Arsenios, Nadine Robbins, etc., etc. My grandfather used to say, son, no matter where you go in this world and no matter what you see, somewhere up in there you will find a Negro. For a long time, this wor worldly truism was when I felt best described the presence of the black imagist in the white art world. But when you got a whole mess of Negroes up in anything like we find it in the wall of today, their populist presidents presence becomes a political statement and a hoodoo hollering political statement within itself regardless of what one thinks of their work. Simply because a mess of new world Africans freely roaming and ranging spaces of power and privilege nominally or metaphysically deemed white automatically translates into hoodoo police action, a mojo sexual coalition, a you know how we do insurgency. 
The miseducated mongrel hordes of Negroes rolled up in their visually, poetically, conceptually, hoodooistically doing the damn thing could make for some other kind of drama. Ishmael Reed, author of the Neo Hoodoo Manifesto, in the year novels of Neo Hoodooism, Yellow Radio Broke Down, Mumbo Jumbo, The Last Days of Louisiana Red, and Flight to Canada once wrote a poem called Can a Metronome Summon the Thunder or Call the Gods? basically inviting invidious comparisons between European symphonic music and West African drumming. The young African-American jazz pianist Robert Glasper recently declared that his generational jazz peers have no soul compared to New World African Church or even a hip-hop musician because the jazz cats of now don't make music capable of making people dance, shout, cry, collapse, or speak in tongues. That's what you call setting the bar high, drawing a line in the sand, raising expectations and whatnot. This, of course, begs the question, is there a contemporary black visual art capable of dragging folk down to the floor, not to mention dragging them poltergeist style off to other dimensions, as actually occurs through African visual forms? Aquaba, vive, uh, ground drawings, masks, trance, visible, visibly possessed dancers whose rhythms enable vision quests. Not to imply that there should be some sort of black authenticity or black magic grounded in black music for the new world African visual culture, but to remind that community-based African artistic practice has established a remote and miraculous event horizon, an oblique phenomenological point of cosmological and quantum regeneration, and musical and visual mechanisms for invoking vertiginous and convulsive possession, psychic and physiological transcendence. Could such effects also become the target zone or even the provenance of our 21st century New World African imagist? Not likely, but a Negro and a New World African, a stone cold nigga even, still has dreams. All right, so that was what I, really wanted to share with you all. I, when I first read the book through, I thought that would be a really wonderful piece to share with everybody. Um, I think there should be music specifically for the movements that we have, um, and we should continue to do that even when they're continue to be co-opted. Um, you know, I do agree that you know, it is really interesting watching everybody else have their versions of basically of what we do. Like, you know, as a part of why I don't watch K-pop is because I'm just like, they're just twerking and, you know, using basic hip hop beats and stuff. And then people are like, see, this is classy. And I'm like, mm, I'm not going to be doing this. I won't. But at any rate, um, I felt like that was such a powerful note. It, it touched so many different subjects. Um, I apologize for all the mispronunciations. And also I wanted to add that I did add the part um, for Black Lives Matter because <laughs> right when I was reading it, all those different phrases, I was like, oh my goodness, yet another t-shirt, you know, Black Lives Matter, um, us trying to show we exist, us trying to not be the ghosts and, um, you know, just not being seen that way. Um, and, you know, not much changing again, not much changing. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching today. Um, and I will see you next week. Until then, may your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads.